terrible advice. We've got this concept two bike, you do low intensity, just steady. Got an echo bike, we got What in the actual f how many videos are out there telling you how you should approach jujitsu without knowing anything about you? Now, sometimes just rolling more is actually the right answer, but sometimes it could be beneficial to supplement your training with some additional cardio targeted exercise. In my opinion, giving people a guide and providing education on how they should approach their training is better than giving hyper specific advice in videos like this. In this video, I'm going to give you examples of what really good strength and conditioning coaches should be taking into consideration when advising their athletes about their cardio. And of course, the science behind why these these approaches are best. So, what do we mean by cardio? Simply stated, cardio can just be the act of elevating your heart rate and keeping it elevated over an extended period of time. Of course, the demands are going to vary based off of different sports. However, this definition can apply to almost any form of exercise. Now, what about specifically for jujitsu? Well, much like any good question, the answer really isn't so simple. So, the first concept I want to get into is this idea of sports specificity. Any good strength and conditioning coach worth their weight knows that if you can achieve a similar stimulus doing a sports specific activity rather than a general exercise and there's no injury present, the sports specific activity is the better choice. Simply put, specificity is king. And at this point, I'll go ahead and state this, even though some coaches might freak out. If you're a white belt with no grappling experience, the absolute best way to develop your cardio for jujitsu is to actually do jujitsu. Yes, the old heads and conventional wisdom were right about this one. And you may not have heard this before, but they were right for one reason, and that is fear. I had the great fortune of working with a lot of patients early in my career that suffered from chronic or persistent pain. And these folks would often get out of breath just from trying to get out of bed. And no, not necessarily due to being overweight or deconditioned, although some of them were. But more often than not, they were holding their breath and bracing, particularly when they were about to move because they were anticipating a painful experience. In fact, I'm willing to bet that a lot of you have experienced this yourselves. Many of you have probably pulled a muscle in your lower back. In the acute stages of injuries like this, even the smallest movements hurt when you make them. Tell me if these noises sound familiar. Oh, uh, ah. Sometimes even standing up and walking to the bathroom can make it feel like you just ran a mile. And all you did was brace for a movement that you feared was going to be painful. And this phenomenon happens even when we feel threatened in the absence of pain. They've even done some studies where they have asked people to hold their breath for as long as they can simply while lying on their back. And they measured their body's physiological responses. When we hold our breath, oxygen is unable to get to our tissues since there's no diffusion at the level of the alveoli. So our body goes into a state of hypercapnia, which basically means you have too much carbon dioxide in your blood. So this, along with the signals to your brain from barrel receptors that detect even the smallest changes in arterial pressure, causes your body to slow its heart rate and conserve oxygen-rich blood. This causes a response from your sympathetic nervous system that pretty much forces you to breathe again. And this point is referred to in the literature as the physiological breakpoint. After this, your heart rate and your breathing rate both rise in an attempt to normalize the oxygen levels in your blood. This is why it doesn't matter if you've got a crossfitter or a marathon runner that has a really good aerobic base. You can have the best aerobic base in the world, but if you're put in a position position where you're doing a ton of isometric muscle contractions, you're in an unfamiliar environment, and you're likely holding your breath to some degree, you're going to be almost as gassed as the next white belt with a shitty aerobic base. Now the marathon runner's heart rate may recover quicker, which is a different and very important conversation. However, that's not the purpose of this video. For new grapplers, worry about exposing yourself to the environment, become comfortable moving within that environment, and your cardio will come with time. And before you get your panties in a wad, this is not to say that Tabatas or steady state cardio or sprints don't have their place, or that your cardio and BJJ can't get marginally better with them. In fact, I'll give you an example when it could, which is actually, I think, pretty common in most jiu-jitsu gyms. Everybody knows that purple belt that like rips two or three sigs before training. It can do pretty much whatever he wants with the white and blue belts in his class without losing his breath. But then he rolls with higher belts and he gets gassed out immediately because, well, his lungs look like fucking raisins. <laughs> now this guy could probably stand to add some steady state cardio or some anaerobic interval work from time to time, especially if he's a hobbyist. Let's say this is a competitive purple belt and he really doesn't get a lot of good looks that challenge him since there aren't many other higher level belts in his gym that can hang with him. This is another time when supplemental cardio may be beneficial. However, I would still argue that in this case, if he had other training partners with his experience level and technique, that he could get much more beneficial cardio if he was just deliberate with his training. For example, instead of doing Tabatas or interval sprints, he could do, let's say, five two to three minute rounds with all out effort starting from the standing position. You can consider these takedown rounds. So since they're all out effort, 
Once somebody gets the takedown, you stand up and you immediately start again. And then you set a really short recovery time in between sets. Here you get all the really good benefits of an anaerobic stimulus while participating in your sport. This is the sports science jackpot. Since you're building really good neuromuscular adaptations while feeling what it's like to perform your sport under these conditions, this is undoubtedly better for sport development than intervals or any other general cardio exercise. Okay, so I wanna be crystal clear on when it's probably better to just roll more. The first is if you're new to grappling. The second is literally any other time that you can come up with a sport specific workout that gets you a similar stimulus to what your cardio of choice was going to try to accomplish. And this is especially true for competitors. A good rule of thumb is any amount of time that you have to spend away from your actual sport to do cardio that could have otherwise been accomplished with manipulating some training variables is probably a waste of time. And now for the times when you could probably get away with doing some supplemental cardio, whether it be for aerobic or anaerobic purposes. The first is when you don't really have any feasible way to simulate the stimulus that you're trying to accomplish with the cardio. And the second is when you just really enjoy that form of cardio, whether it be running, cycling, rowing, etc. So I'll end on this note. Most of you know by now that my entire channel is a proponent of a science-based approach. So long as we don't discredit the experiences of those who have gone before us, the science-based world can easily get bogged down in the nuance, which can be important and can be very useful. But oftentimes the answer is right in front of us. We could be so quick to throw the baby out with the bathwater, so to speak, when it comes to old traditions and wisdom. Sometimes they've stood the test of time for a reason. And as it turns out, just row more has stood the test of time. It continues to withstand the test of scientific inquiry. I'm sure there will be some who have disagreements or want clarification, so please let me know in the comments. Email me at combatathletephysio at gmail.com. Send me a DM on Instagram at, at combatathletephysio. And I also started a Reddit community where you can ask about your injuries as well. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.